Hi everybody, I'm Joey Paul and I'm an indie author and welcome back to my channel. I get asked a lot about how you write disabled characters. I did a video back ages ago about writing them in general and I did one recently about the tropes I hate when it comes to disabled characters which I will link up in the cards. So I thought I would give you the bare bones of how to write a disabled character. This is by no means a complete list. You do need to do some research on your own, but this is basically my five steps to getting started. So number one, research is your friend. As with anything you're not sure about, research is a great way to get started. You have to remember that you're going to want sources that are written by disabled people. It's no good just searching and reading about how other able people perceive the situation. All that's going to do is stick you in hot water because you'll have a skewed view of the reality of the situation. If possible, you can approach actual disabled people. But be warned, we're not here to teach you about our lives. So if you do find someone, ask about discussing it with them, politely, before just demanding to be told what it's like. Just as with any minority, you want to be sure the information is accurate. You want to be sure that you're portraying things in a way that is correct, but not also not harmful to the disabled community. So make sure you look into what not to do as well as what to do. And remember, we are not a monolith. Talking to an amputee about blindness when they don't experience it is only going to get them annoyed. And if they have any info, it might be incorrect or trope filled. Disabled people are not always well informed about every disability and there's always the possibility of internalised ableism. So be sure to talk to people with the actual condition because that's where you're going to get the most accurate information from. This can take weeks if not months because you shouldn't just be using one source but a wide array of sources. Especially when talking to disabled people who might also intersect other minorities like I'm bi and I'm disabled. So some of the ableism I experience comes from being both of these. It's the same for a lot of people who might also be trans and disabled, or a person of colour and also disabled, or all three. The experience that you're writing should be as accurate as possible. The last thing you want to do is portray things in a way that is harmful to the community, because then there seems little point in doing the whole thing. Which brings me to number two, sensitivity readers. Excuse the violet, she just jumped up here. Even if you're a disabled writer, if you're writing about disabilities that are not your own, you should still employ a sensitivity reader who has that disability. If you're not aware, a sensitivity reader is someone from a marginalised group who will go through and read your manuscript, check that what you've written is both accurate and send in the message that you want to send. This step is not optional and should be done before the professional edit and sometimes alongside beta readers who can also be sensitivity readers. Personally, I do this after my CP has read it and before beaters so that I can be sure to recruit some disabled beaters as well. This way my work has been seen by more than one set of eyes disability wise and then I'm sure that I'm doing things the right way. Finding sensitivity readers can be as simple as a call out on Twitter asking for people from a certain background or in this case disability to contact you if they're interested. Some people will charge a free and others will be happy to do it for free. You have to decide which and who you work with. Moving on to number three, write them like a normal character. With all things considered, a disabled character is, at heart, just the same as an abled character. They have the same thoughts, the same feelings, the same ideas and dreams as anyone else. So don't put too much stock in having to write them differently than an abled character. While yes, you should put research into the disability itself, we're not an alien race. We can interact and do things the same as able people. So when it comes to writing us, then just have us have the same thought process. But you'll also find that other things that some disabled able people find hard is actually easier for them. Like when I was still on the pump, and even now, I find it easy as pie to inject myself with meds. I can swallow a mouthful of pills easy enough, while I know a lot of disabled people look at it and go, nope. There are, of course, quirks to being disabled, and part of that is adapting to a life and world that's built for able people. It's not always about ramps and disabled spaces, but about falling in love just as anyone would. Sometimes you might need to make changes and allowances, like if your character is in a chair, then yeah, they would need help getting into an inaccessible space. Or they might spend more time in bed than anyone else. But underneath that all, we are human and we should be treated as such. There's nothing more annoying as a disabled human to find people looking at me as if I'm an other. 
as if my life is this hardship that should be avoided at all costs and it's simply not true but that's a rant for another day but it does bring me to my next point number four don't just have the one to avoid tokenism like with any minority having just one to even up the cast is not always a good thing now i know a lot of people will watch this video and think it's a ton of work for just a handful of characters but at the same time i'll bet you'll do just as much research for other aspects of the book and don't think a thing of it the same can be said for disabled characters you can write more than one and you can make sure that they don't fall into the kind of bad representation which i'll discuss in a minute one thing that's clear as the book world evolves is there are a lot of people and minorities finally having their voices heard, their books published, and part of that is waking up the rest of the world to the value of their stories. So when you sit down to plot or make your characters, think about whether or not you can have more than one. After all, disabilities don't have to mean wheelchairs and oxygen. It can be an invisible disability or it can be something that everyone can see. You don't have to have a cast full of wheelchairs, you can have blind characters and deaf characters. You can have characters who are fine walking but have seizures from time to time. You can have service animals and all of the wide array of disabilities. We are the largest minority and our stories are just as exciting and valid, so don't be afraid to play around in the sandbox and see what you come up with. And back to that point. Number five, learn the tropes to avoid them as much as you can. The tropes are more than the ones I did in that video at the beginning of the year which I talked about and I've linked up in the cards. But there are too many times when you have a disabled character and they turn out to be the villain or magic you cured or faking it all along. Do I really have to explain why that's a bad idea? You can probably work it out. But when the only rep you get is bad you can understand why a lot of the world has a bunch of misconceptions about disabled people and their disabilities. And I want to warn those wanting to write these characters that there are so many dangerous tropes to fall into and you need to do your best to avoid them. Now along with most of those tropes you can take them and turn them on their head but to do that especially if you're not disabled with that condition itself you need to make sure that you have a sensitivity reader and beta readers who can let you know if you missed your mark or not. After all the whole point is to make sure that your characters hit home and I love that people are interested in writing disabled stories and I know that there are a lot of people through the tweets I see and the Tumblr posts and such the world wants to hear disabled stories and I feel like the majority of them are sick of the tropes as well but that could just be my wishful thinking. So there we have it my five beginning tips for how to write a disabled character. I can't stress enough that these are just bare bones that you will need to go into more detail and look into things yourself. The simple reason that I can't give you a formula for writing a disabled character is because there isn't one, just like there's no formula for writing any other kind of character either. You have to do the research, you have to look into yourself, and you have to employ sensitivity and beta readers to make sure that you hit the mark. I'm really glad that there was so much interest in my disabled tropes video, I'm really really amazed by how many people watched it and commented and were really interested in it. And I will be doing more videos on the topic of disabled characters in the future. I'm just not sure when right now. So basically, do you have any questions for me about writing disabled characters other than the ones that I've already answered here? And if so, let me know in the comments down below. So that's all I've got time for today. If you want to support my channel, you can comment, subscribe or like. I post new videos on Thursdays. You can find me all over social media and my books are available everywhere. And don't forget to pick up Lights Out and sign up for the Light On cover reveal, all the links to which are listed below. Thanks for watching and remember to keep writing. Bye.